Bomber seats are finally in and well, we need to put them together so we can get them fitted in the tea bucket before we start the painting process. But we got a lot of other things we need to jump into before we actually start riveting these together. All right, gearheads, well, if you're just now joining us, we've made some serious progress on this tea bucket. And I do have one of the bomber seats temporarily set up with some Clecos on there, but we'll come back to that there. Episode four, we got the motor dropped. I talked a little bit about some changes we're gonna do as well as some other issues that I'm having with it. So we'll come back to that a little later in the episode and we'll talk about it. Radiator came in. So we got this set in, it's just in place, just sitting here. We'll pull the plastic down. Have a little surprise for you guys on that as well. I can tell you it ain't gonna stay that color there. We got one of our lamp dishes in here just to kind of see, <laughs> make it look more like a car, right? So I got that set in here. I wasn't really happy with the finish on these. It's super, super cheap finish, but these were the cheapest buckets that I could actually find for here. So more than likely, we're gonna break out the powder coater before we actually mount these permanently and we'll probably end up repowder coating them or we may end up Raptor lining them. Not really too sure yet. As in episode four, we did get the uh, gas tank actually installed and put in, as well as the battery box, but I had to pull all this out because I didn't realize that the body itself was such a tight fit that it wouldn't actually fit over any of the seams down here. So we did pull that out. We're gonna end up getting that remounted. But we have some other stuff that we had to address over here, which we'll come back to that, as well as a little bit of an issue with our AN6 fuel line fitting that comes out here. But the interior of the bucket besides the bomber seats, I did solicit some ideas from you guys and I really appreciate all the feedback you guys left. I was originally gonna do Linex interior here, but we're actually gonna end up doing a Raptor liner because it's not as aggressive grit. It'll be easier to clean. So I got this thing at top dead center here and we need to drop the distributor in, but this is one thing that I did not actually do yet. And just cause I wasn't ready, but put that right there and let that sit there. And then uh, we're gonna turn the crank over and that should drop right in instead of trying to fish the oil gear and all that fun stuff. Then we'll put our breaker bar on the end. We're just gonna hold that and see if we can find that oil drive gear. And this thing should just drop right in. we go it's set you can see that it's actually flushly down there no shims no nothing what I did notice when I was in here digging around and working on the distributor I noticed that the transmission bolts themselves for the bell housing right down there actually bang against the body um, yeah we're gonna have to look into that I'm not really too sure that's awfully close and I don't really think they make low profile head grade 8 bolts I'm not really too sure so we're gonna have to tackle that one or I don't really know. We'll come back to that. So I keep banging my damn knee into this fuel line and we need to go ahead and take care of it. I've got it unwrapped just a little bit. I do need to cut it. And there really isn't much slack left over but we do need to put our adapter on the end. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna get rid of the bulk of most of this. That way we can work with it just a little bit easier. And I'm just using just a cutting tool here. Nothing, nothing too uh, complicated. And we'll go ahead and get this out of the way here. We'll bend it up just a little bit for right now so we can figure out our contour. Something easier to work with. I need a little more room. Like I said, I keep banging my knee on it and we're bending everything. So we'll get that out of the way there and then we're gonna cut that down as well here in a second. So like the back here, I decided to go with these AN6 push-ons and then um, we're gonna do the hose. Now I did move the fuel line a little further back here. Like I was doing just a second ago, I was wrapping it around. But just considering this fuel pump and where it's at and the way it's gonna have to be twisted, I don't want a bunch of stuff going on here. So we're gonna use this and then like we're gonna do on the back, we're gonna use a small piece of hose because we don't wanna go rigid line to the fuel pump itself. But we will do our barb a and six adapter on here but this is just a push fitting 
like we used on the fuel tank in the back. They say it's rated for, you know, fuel injection, 200 PSI, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't use it. But then again, I'd probably use it and try it out and see how it works. <laughs> do the do the test fit there. So what we're gonna do is this goes on here. And then we're gonna put that on there. It'll be our brass crimp. This will come up. And then for this area here, we'll just wrap some hose is really all we're gonna do. I'm going with a mechanical fan. It should clear. You'll be the first to know if it doesn't. Let's try this again. See if we can <laughs> finally get these two to crimp. I had to take a little more off the fuel line, which now I'm not really happy at all. These are definitely not the best tools to do this. But I can't find any of my ratcheting wrenches. I mentioned in episode four, when we put this in, that it was just way too much of a bend. And yeah, we could serpentine some little uh, hoses in there. But I think we're just gonna do a 90 down. It's probably what we're gonna do. And then we'll take that one and put it onto this. Let's check that out and see if that works. We'll pull that off there. And remember, everything's disconnected right now because we had to put the bucket on to do some trial fitting. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think here? So even with the tank pushed all the way back up, maybe the hose comes out and then right on there. But the thing is, I gotta put another barb there, so it's just gonna be really, really tight. I think we can actually forego the 90 possibly, save the money, and not have to buy another one for the front. And what we'll do is we'll just come off the tank. And then do a hose wrap out and then down. All right, guys, so here's the fun part. We're going to end up putting these seats together. And before we really proceed with anything else, I need to get these put together. That way we can get them fitted so we can start kind of figuring out a little bit of the interior of the tea bucket. So each seat is going to take about 200 um, of the rivets themselves. It's going to be a long, long process. As well as we're going to be using some Clecos to hold this stuff together. So what we need to do is you need to start getting everything mocked up start riveting. So the one thing I really, really like about these seats actually is, what would you call it? Knurled ends. That way it's actually not cutting, you know, into your body. And it's got a very, very nice bend into them. So I looked for bomber seats for a while, actually, through a few websites and found some pre-made ones that were already assembled, but I wanted the experience of actually making my own. That's the whole point of building this tea bucket is, you know, to say that, hey, not quite building it, but you assembled it yourself. Now this is gonna be the outside here. I don't remember what the actual orientation on these is. I think that's about right, right there. That looks cool. It goes to actually hold these in place. We do probably need to go through and drill out some of the holes just to make sure everything is gonna be fit. I heard that the rivets themselves for these are actually really, really tightly drilled. And uh, if there's any burrs in the way, It'll actually distort the rivet. So that'll hold us temporarily here. The 3 16 drill bit, we pretty much got to go through every single hole just to make sure there's no barbs. It's a lot of holes to be poking through. Did I mention like every hole? So we're set on the seats. We can start putting some rivets in. I've already started a few here, kind of dialing in the gun. Uh, first one kind of sucked, second one was a little better, third one sucked, and well, here we are. Mm, that's pretty good there. Some time to get a good rhythm going on this without actually damaging. This one actually looks a lot better than this one here, but we need to actually bring them together now, and yeah. <laughs> We're almost having a seat.
And we're finally done. Thousand hours later, this is a pretty tedious job here. So I'm hoping I never have to do it again, to be honest with you. But taking a closer look, they actually turned out pretty well. I got some good smash going on. And you can see in some areas where the bucking bar actually slipped up on me and then nicked a few areas. I do have to say the second seat was uh, a lot better than the first seat, 100%. Now we'll look at the first seat here in a second, but same thing on the back on these rivets here. You can see in some areas where the bucking bar slipped a little bit. And again, it nicked some spots. Now this was the first seat that I did here and I struggled here a little bit to kind of get a good momentum going. But eventually I got the smash going pretty good. Felt like, uh, what was it, Rosie the Riveter, right? <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing this for so long. And yeah, bucking bar marks here. So did my best to kind of keep it on track here. But again, it's got some uh, flavor, character, I guess you could call it. Let's look at now, it's not like you're gonna actually see the back. And these rivets turned out pretty well, especially for the heads. And again, there's another area where the gun actually slipped right off the rivet itself and started, uh, what was it called, crescent mooning there. But it looks really good. Pretty sure they're pretty uncomfortable. Let's drop them in the bucket and see how they look. Not quite ready to mount these just yet, but I think we can go ahead and set them in and see how they look before we do anything crazy. Um, I think the channel body with the little indentation back there might be a problem, but we'll see what we have to do about that. And we'll throw in that seat number two right back in here. That looks pretty damn good. What do you guys think? It almost like it needs a little center console glove box. That should kind of be nice, but then we've got a little bit of an issue though. Um, the two sides are not even. Now look at this with the bucket. It is channeled, and these two channeling portions on this side versus this side over here do not actually appear to be fully even with how far they stick out. And you can actually see the difference there. I probably have to get that measured. Once it's back even further, I don't think it's actually going to be the seats because this is sitting flush against that there. And that one is sitting flush right there. Wow, I'm gonna have to do some adjustment here. So what I wanna do here is I actually wanna use this ammo can, kinda of like, you know, a little glove box in the middle here. So if we actually raise these seats up because of the way that the bucket is designed, and it is tapered down lower, we may be able to get just a little more room out of it and we may be able to squeeze it right in there. Call me crazy here, but with just a little bit of crude engineering, like I said, these taper up, so we'll split them out just a little more and we'll get the blocks in there, but it's kind of what I'm going for. I don't know, what do you think, that looks stupid? I kind of like it, it looks sweet. And it keeps you a little bit of storage back here once these are all you know, firmly planted and mounted with some fender washers. And we're gonna go right to the floor with probably a two by four spacer in the middle there. wood cut here we're gonna need to put that in but I need to jump over to the 3d printer really quick because I had some changes on the prints themselves for the dash pieces we're reprinting on another printer right now which we'll talk about that one in a different episode this one's still got a couple more hours to go before it's done but on the SLA printer I ended up canceling out the dash piece and I figured we'll start making some dash logos or interior logos on what I want to use. So it's kind of hard to see here, but it needs to be pulled from here 
and cured over there. So let's get set up and we'll get that sucker scraped off there. And as you can see, can you see what we printed? Yeah, it's a Ford logo, all right. Well, let's actually put it in here and clean it off first. So our logo is not quite ready for prime time yet. We'll wash it one more time. That should be enough time right there. Oh, we're looking. Yep. There we go. What do you guys think about that? So now it's actually hard and it's still kind of flexible, but it's a lot harder than it is. But we'll get that mounted on the bucket as well. Probably going to get it mounted before we actually paint it, but we're going to end up priming it and whatnot. Let's see how this sucker is going to look here. We'll probably paint it again, like I said, before we actually mount it on. Not really too sure. Or mount it, rivet it on, and then prime it and paint over it. But I think that's going to look really, really good. I may put it back in the UV cure one more time. There is some small soft spots here, but that looks really good. Now, there are a few things we've got to do before we actually go back and mount the seat here. But I got the gauges in, like I was saying earlier, and I got the cheapest ones I could possibly find. Half plastic, half alloy, half... I don't know. They feel pretty damn cheap. Well, let's tear into these suckers and see what we got going on a little closer. That'll be our little RPM gauge there. It doesn't feel too bad. It is a glass front and the metal ring. It's just the back that's plastic. Now it is going to be an incandescent, which we're going to change that. Um, yeah, we're going to change that to form of LED. I'll figure out which one it is. And then the box, you know, just mounting hardware. And that's the incandescent bulb right there. So that should be an easy fix. I think those are the ones that actually just pull out there. And we just went over the RPM gauge. Again, nothing too special. It looks like there's point two of a mile on this sucker. Damn, probably gonna have to get our money back for that one. Oil gauge. Yep, nice little oil gauge, all metal there. Thank God, I hope that would suck if it was all plastic. So again, like I say, this is about the cheapest one I could find. This gauge kit was like 150 doll hairs. And that's gonna be our water right there. Sensor attached, ready to go, ready to put in. So these are some nice construction on these ones versus the Speedo. And what do we have here? Oh, I hope this isn't what I think it is. Damn, seriously? Another fuel level. Dang it. Man, this one actually feels like better quality than what we put in. Oh, this is much better quality. Wow. Kind of makes me want to pull the one that we installed out of the tank and use this one. This one's heavy as shit. So I've never been one to be trustworthy with a tape measure and my measurements are always somewhat questionable, extremely questionable. But we're looking at about 38 inches wide on the dash here. I do want to drill the holes before we do any painting. That way I can actually uh, deburr them, all that fun stuff. And we don't end up drilling through nice freshly painted dash. Plus there's some areas on this dash that actually really need to be fixed. It's, um, I don't know, it's gonna need Bondo, but it's gonna need epoxy primer before anything's actually done on here. And there's like just goo that has nothing to do with the molding process. It's almost like somebody spilled rubberized cement on this thing here. Uh, definitely not me. But we'll go ahead and take our speedometer. Now, I'm not really too sure where we should mount these. I know most of the time, you know, Normal people would mount it right here. You know, do RPM and then do uh, your speedometer or, or whatever. I actually thought about doing a cluster up here, but the way the windshield mounts, way too tight up in here. I also thought about doing speedometer, RPM gauge, kind of like in the middle, and then doing like our accessory stuff over here on the side and kind of just change it up. Or do it on the passenger side, make the passenger responsible for the speed. I don't know, I mean, do we really need a speedometer and a tea bucket? I think it's kind of a no-brainer for that one there. But we do need to figure out where the center mark is on that. Maybe we'll drill some holes once we get it all measured. We can only drill it once. But I did find something else out about the tea bucket that I noticed once I jumped in that I didn't notice before. Let's take a look at that. So I ended up getting the reinforced firewall down here. And yeah, there's plywood, right? 
Now the hole is not actually drilled for the shaft that goes through for the steering. And I notice it's just a very, very thin piece of fiberglass down there. So if you're thinking about getting this bucket and you don't do the reinforced firewall, you probably end up putting your foot right through that firewall itself. It's some thin shit right there. I'm hoping the bucket's level. It's probably not, but we're going off for that lip down there, not the actual bucket itself. So we'll just mark our hole numbers here for every inch. This way we have a guidance on what we're actually gonna do here. I'm sure there's a better way to do this again. With everything I'm doing, I always choose the hard way. How do you guys mount your gauges? You just pop a hole, drop it in. So I went to that website for, you know, Jeff Bezos' uh, hoarder closet there. And I would look at that some two and one sixteenths and three and one eighths and yeah, pretty expensive. Budget build, right? Budget creep, we don't need that. So Harbor Freight, eight bucks, and I found something that'll probably work even better. Well, I think that one will actually work. Actually, maybe this one will. Let's take a peek at that. Not too small. If anything, we'll just use a Dremel and make the hole bigger. And that one should, nope, too small. I bet this one does though. Oh yeah, that'll work fine. So utilizing some very questionable mathematics and some very professional eyeballing, I think we're gonna drill right here. So two inches out and we're just gonna do bam and bam. I think that'll look good there. If we screw up here, we're just going to have to end the entire tea bucket build because, well, I'll be so depressed I won't be able to proceed any further. Shit. absolutely hate cutting this stuff. Well, that'll look good right there. And then again, some questionable high school dropout math. Pretty good. What do you guys think? Not too bad on that measurement, actually. Shift it over just a little bit. I think we'll be good. I think I might need to actually use a pilot drill bit for those. It'll work just a tad bit better here. expecting this to fit perfectly because we might oh wow <laughs> it worked damn that looks really good and eeny meeny miny mo and we're just doing two uh inch increments here between the gauges Tell you what, we're gonna have a little bit of a last minute design change here. I don't wanna be bending around the steering wheel trying to read gauges. So we'll put our third one over here. Well, one, two, three, four, five, right? I can't count. Our fifth one over here, and then we'll do volts over by the key. I think that'll probably be the best way to do this. And this will definitely create conversation because people will be like, hey, why the hell did you put the gauges on the passenger side? Well, I don't know. Or maybe if it ever sells to a foreign buyer, they can then move the steering wheel to the opposite side. So let's drop some gauges in this sucker here and see 
how it's going to look. No particular order. We're just tossing them in there. Put our other one right in there. This is probably about the hardest part of the build, to be honest with you. Seems pretty easy, but everything else was easier, if that makes sense. So I know this isn't the voltage one, but come on, give me a break here, just while we, <laughs> while we fit some stuff in. Go just like that, right there. Lock that down. That looks pretty good with these gauges, the way they're getting set up. Take a peek at that. So we got our dum-dum tape measure out. You know, dum-dum because it has all the lines marked with the actual numbers. And then we're gonna do the wood just like that there. But we need to figure out what the measurement is between the two. I could just bring them like that, honestly. Um, it might actually be easier just to do that versus actually on the edges like that because I know that the circles are going to be punched the same. But let's see what it is between the two. So about two and a half ish. So that should work out, I think. Probably glue it down, screw it, and then drill the holes. I think in the seat itself. We'll just rough it. So I noticed they actually drilled the holes for the bucket already to mount to the frame. And we're actually covering up one of the holes here, which doesn't matter. We'll just drill another hole. It's no big deal, but that should work out there. So guys, we need to pump the brakes on this seat installation here really quick. So I showed you these when I was putting the seats uh, together and I had no idea what they were. And now essentially they're just fender washers for drilling holes and running the bolts through the bottom of the seat, except this will get riveted on the other side. I hate riveting, so I'm not gonna have fun with that one. But, what I was mentioning earlier, we were gonna actually run a piece of wood across on the bottom, mount it, and then put it in the bucket and use this to actually support the seat. But we have a bit of an issue with the bucket itself. So we were actually gonna use the wood, okay, to butt it all the way up against the bucket here, and then run a screw through, run a screw through there and there, and then bolt from the bottom up. Problem is, I have the channel body here, and the channel body actually completely wraps all the way around, and while you think there's plywood here, there's not. The fiberglass actually wraps all the way around to the beam of the frame here. So the only place we're actually gonna be able to truly mount the seats is actually bolt here, bolt there, bolt here, bolt there, on the inside. I don't know how I feel about that. Now, if you're doing the non-channel, then you can just run the bolts here and here and here and here, and you won't have any issue, but yeah, that's a little bit of a pickle there. Okay. Let's do this again. If we can get in here. Damn, I forgot how loud that was. Now you can see where I screwed up here and well, I could have added this out and not show you guys, but it'll work for what we're doing here. Once we even get the little pad on here, our Joanne Fabrics custom made upholstery, you won't even see that. So now I'm starting to see why people are doing the bench. This is absolutely a pain in the butt. So after messing with this thing for a couple hours, we're only gonna be able to use about three of the holes that we actually made. The reason is the swing arm on the back actually protrudes to the rear part of the seat. It's kind of hard to explain. It's in the way, but we'll get underneath and I'll show you what it looks like. So we're probably gonna have to make another hole in the seat, except we don't have any more of those little triangle bits. So maybe we can try to 3D print one or something. I'm not really too sure, um, but this is not easy at all. And I'm still seeing why most people just go with the bench because the bench would have been the easier route here especially trying to get these lined up. This absolutely sucks. And now that we're getting the driver's seat mounted, I'm starting to see how crooked 
our passenger seat is. So we'll probably end up basing it now off the actual driver's seat, I think. So we're only gonna do three bolts for right now to mount these in. That'll give us some ability to adjust it just a little bit here because the back of the T-bucket itself is not even. So we'll have to adjust within the seat itself, but I want to maximize knee room and whatnot. So that'll be good. Well, let's see if we can fit in here because this is like the most awkward position imaginable. Well, there's worse, but this isn't any better. Now the hardest part of the build is actually installed and bolted down somewhat. Like I was saying, we'll make some other holes here and we'll figure that out. But I couldn't mount the seats all the way back and it's hard to tell, but the bucket is not actually perfectly symmetrical on each side. Uh, it's almost like it's warped. It's thought it was maybe the seats, but the way it was molded, there's actually more over on the pass driver's side than there is on the passenger side, including the channel portion that's underneath the seat. Now with these seats though, there's a lot of flex. I knew they were aluminum and I knew there was going to be a lot of flex in them, but I didn't think there was going to be that much flex and there was no way I could actually take it all the way back. Now, if you were doing the non-channeled, you could take it all the way back and flush mount it, but you can't on here. And, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of movement on that. So what I'll do, we'll pull the seats out in the other build right before we start getting everything prepped and ready for paint. And we'll probably brace it up in the back with something else. I'll look and see what we can do here, but something enough where it's not a Cracker Barrel rocker, because I guarantee you with that bouncing up and down the road, and especially with that flex with somebody sitting in there, I don't think that's going to last too long. It'll break eventually. So we'll get something figured out for that. Get something back here and then you know, maybe we'll carpet that itself instead of the Linux thing. Not really too sure yet, but we need to install some gauges, not actually install them, but let's go ahead and get them mocked up and get them ready. Cause we got to make sure everything fits before we start doing paint and prep. Squeeze in here temporarily. At least now we have somewhere to sit. Kind of. Don't worry about these lines. I promise you it's straight. I ended up shifting everything over. So, probably do the RPM tack there. And then we'll do our speedometer here. Make that the passenger's responsibility to keep track with that one there. I think for the water, I'm not too sure where we should actually put the water one. I would just toss it in over here. I don't think it really matters. The Volt one I'll keep near me. Kind of like it right next to the ignition key. And then we have our oil. We got one more floating around here somewhere. That's right our fuel level. We'll make that the passenger's responsibility. That way if we run out of gas, he can push. So the next thing we got here is we're just gonna use just a small push pull on the lights. Nothing fancy. So we'll put the lights right there. I think that'll work perfect. And the key we'll put right over here. I think that'll work good. See if it fits. It's actually a GM key. Well, GM cut is what they say. I think that'll be good just like that. Voltmeter, RPM, speedometer. Man, we are almost there. And I have some other things that came in. Let me grab those too. I also wanted to add a touch of modernization onto the bucket. So I got USB ports, 
3 amp? Who knows? I got them in another car of mine. They work great. They look great when they're lit up. So we'll put one of these in as well. Not really too sure. We'll slap it in here somewhere where I can charge my stuff or depending on what I'm actually doing. And then I got two, so maybe we'll slap another one on the other side or maybe we'll put one in the trunk. Not too sure. I think using some very high-end scientific formula, I think we're gonna just do eeny, meeny, miny, mode. Slap that, just like that. And it has like a little locking key twist on for the back. The key, the volt, RPM, miles per hour, water, oil. Damn, what was that one again? Oh yeah, fuel, that's important. And then our little charging port. So that'll be nice. There, charge all our cool little stuff. That other one we'll put back here. Probably mount it in the back, or I might build a little box for it. That way we can draw right off the battery that's going to go back in. But we're going to have to get all this put back in, in in the meantime. Actually, we're going to actually pull it out because we do need to prep the bucket for paint and get it all cleaned up and get it a little scuffed up. And then I have some small areas that I'm going to need to fix on the outside here, as well as some little indentations down here where I'm not really too sure what happened. It was all wrapped up, but I think it got damaged from the manufacturing shipping process. Well, thank God that interior is done for now. And well... It's time for the radiator, tea bucket radiator. So pick this up. It's designed for the frame here. It's a pretty good price, not too bad. Do have to do some uh, drilling here for the brackets. And I got a little bit of a special mounting kit for this because it is going on a rigid frame for the tea bucket. And because of all the flex and all that fun stuff, don't want a busted radiator. They're not expensive. They're not cheap. Um, but I definitely don't want to have to buy another one again first bump I hit so welds are pretty cool But let's take a closer look because there's a bunch of holes in the back and well We got to figure out how we're gonna actually have to plumb it as well I'm gonna leave the cardboard on here while we mount it and probably until we're actually ready to do everything else and get it started I damage stuff pretty easy and I know if I take this off these fins are gonna be all screwed up on the front end within the next week or so but Pretty much self-explanatory doesn't come with any type of cap or anything. You're gonna have to get all that it is threaded here, so that's nice on that part there. And uh, we've got our overflows here. And as well as there's a pass-through chamber down here for the transmission cooler. We're going to end up actually plugging. Oh, wow. They're actually plugged with metal bungs, so that's pretty nice there. So we'll probably double-check that and make sure. Another overflow here. We're going to have to get a valve. Actually, that one might be plugged as well. I'm not too sure. The description said they weren't, so... We'll double check on that there. We'll probably do a little overflow pass through tank there. But again, yeah, I don't want to use that. Now in the first video, we did talk about transmission cooling. And I am going to do a separate transmission cooler. I'm not going to use the one that's actually on the radiator. So we'll mount this to the bottom of the body. I thought about mounting it to the frame, but with the channel body and everything that's going on right now, it's just not going to work out. And on top of that, I think if I ever had to remove the body, Maybe it's easier if this is actually mounted to the body and not the frame. I'm not too sure, but I think this will work perfect for our Turbo 350. So what do they say? Measure once, cut four times till the hole is completely centered. It's kind of weird. These are kind of weird because the mounting tabs on this radiator are just not an adequate size. Like they're not the same on both sides. They're very odd. And the mounting area that they give you on the radiator brackets on the frame are kind of an odd size as well. And we got ourselves a new punch, but this one doesn't even seem to be working right either. These are just absolute junk. You guys know of a good quality one? Let me know. One that's not like, you know, $150,000. We need to get this table cleaned up here start to look like a war zone almost it's about the last time i think this drill bit is going to see any action and we're using some pretty fancy smancy hardware here 
expansion bolts, just a spring. Damn. Did we seriously drill our hole too small? Well, let's make it bigger. Now here's a closer look at those two frame tabs here. Like I was saying, they don't stick out very far and they don't really give you enough meat to work with. I would actually like to see these a lot bigger. I, I know that, I guess it fits well where the plate sits on the frame here and there is enough meat, but there's just not enough meat for a bolt here. I mean, I don't think there is. It is a pretty thick little plate, but I just think those should actually be just a tad bit bigger there. Say a prayer, hope it works. Damn, really? Again? This one would be pretty, pretty life altering if you screwed up this hole here. Yeah, upgraded bit for the win. This one here is a straight butter bit right here. Nice. And we'll ream out this hole just a little more. Yeah, that would probably explain why the drill's not working right. Battery's about dead. You can fix that problem really quick right there. Well, maybe not, because uh, I lost my chuck. Damn, we're not winning the night. So we put our little rubber grommets in already. We'll set that there for right now. Hopefully you can get something just lined up just a little better here. Now I understand this was a pretty universal mounting kit here and thank goodness the bolts are actually long enough for that. There's really no instructions. They said you could do the rubber on the top, rubber on the bottom, spring on the bottom, or spring on the top. So I don't really know the right way. So for now, I'm just gonna do it like that. So I'm already at that point in the build where I'm like, well, I would do this differently or this differently. And I'd probably double mount these with two sets of these ones, but we'll see how it holds up. Maybe have to change it in the future. I'm not too sure. All right, should be pretty good there. So I started the printer a little earlier ago on a new print. And about 13 minutes ago to be exact. And we're gonna need this for the radiator. That's why we haven't really bolted down the radiator yet, but take a look at that. Got ourselves another Ford logo. So what we'll do here is we'll drop it in the Jeffrey Dahmer acid vat. Not too sure why this lid actually needs to be on. So now, let's pull our Ford logo out of here. It's going to look the same. It's nothing different quite yet. Drop that in here. Well, it's not supposed to float. So we'll toss her in the microwave there and we'll grab our cover so we don't actually go blind here and we'll let that go for a couple minutes in the microwave well, more for a stencil for our radiator because we're actually going to paint the radiator black i got some ceramic paint so we're going to slap this right on the front of the radiator we're going to paint the whole thing black and well we're going to leave this part whatever this is brushed aluminum or i think that'll look pretty different i almost thought about doing chevrolet just to throw people off and do a Ford logo up front. But then I was thinking the motor itself is gonna have Chevy valve covers on it. So I think that'll look pretty nice right down there. So you know they actually put this mineral spirits now in a uh, kind of soft plastic clear bottle. Kind of sucks because uh, 
I do like the metal ones, but these just, this is about as cheap as it gets right here. And the price went up. So for the radiator, we're gonna go with the, essentially an engine paint enamel with ceramic. It's actually pretty thin, it's not big. It's got heat dissipating properties and a lot of people recommended this for painting a radiator. Now I know it's kind of one of those things that some people say do it, some people say don't. We're gonna do it, but we're gonna make it look fancy. So we'll drop our Ford logo right up onto there and get it kind of centered. I know you're seeing where I'm going with this. And we're gonna paint the whole thing here and then we'll just leave the behind part, kind of that brushed luminum or whatever the hell that is and see how that turns out. If it looks like shit, then we'll pull it off and just paint that area again. Stuff actually goes on really, really thin. So, do a nice tack coat here. Might need to grab the, the mask. This is some strong stuff. Doesn't smell like normal spray paint to me. It probably doesn't do good well catalyzed in your lungs either. So what do you think? How do you think it turned out? Oh man, that looks good. So surprisingly, that turned out pretty damn well after it dried. It looks really good. So that's about the color we're gonna go for the bucket there. So I'm gonna see if we can match something like that because I think they call it, you know, Duplicolor calls it a, you know, hot rod. I'm sorry, they call it, you know, they're flat black, but the paint companies actually call it rat rod black. And it's kind of weird because from certain angles, you can see where it's still very light here, but from straight on, you can't tell the difference. Only from the top and kind of the sides here. But again, I didn't want to go, you know, balls to the wall here and absolutely saturate that. We'll set this back in very gently without damaging it. And we'll put our cardboard back on here just to protect the fins in the meantime. All right, gearheads, that's it for episode five here. We're pretty much out of parts and we got a lot done. Seats installed, gauges, radiator painted, and a whole hell of a lot of other stuff. So we're getting really close to firing this thing up. But if you're finding the build series helpful for these Speedway Motors T-Buckets, consider supporting the channel. And by supporting the channel, you get access to member-only videos as well as behind the scenes and our vlogs that we're gonna drop when we do the power tour when that ends up coming up. But until episode six, Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Leave any questions or comments you have below, and I'll see you next time.